when I used to walk home from school, I used to get beat up by the Pakistanis because I lived on the Pakistani side. So that I thought Islam was a cult. I thought Islam was a uh, was a bad thing. I thought the Prophet Muhammad was a Pakistani. <sighs> When I used to walk home from school, I used to get beat up by the Pakistanis because I lived on the Pakistani side. So that I thought Islam was a cult. I thought Islam was a uh, was a bad thing. I thought the Prophet Muhammad was a Pakistani, and yeah. I thought it was a warlord, and I thought it was all these things. Not from people telling me this, just from my experience with the Pakistanis. So my teenage years, I played rugby. I, I was I played rugby, and I wanted to concentrate on the rugby, but when you when you're getting beat up by every other day or every week, I'd say at least once a week I got beat up by them for two years, and I never said any, anything to anyone. I just kept it quiet. My reflection on 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 that idea was was an emotional one rather than a rational one. I blamed every Pakistani in in in, in my area for it, and not realizing that the Pakistanis went through what I went through at the same point with the white some of the white community. But I wasn't thinking like that. It was all about how I felt. So that that led me to hate the group, the Pakistani group, which then led me to hate Muslim because I thought that's where they got it from. Okay. So my teenage years were playing rugby, but but then having that getting beat up by the Pakistanis. And would you say that if you saw just that side of Muslims, that you wouldn't be anywhere near Islam I the wasn't. way you are today? No, because I'm here. Okay. Because you have an emotional discourse, but then you have reality. But then I, that, then when I, I remember that I had some Pakistani friends who were good, and I speak to them still today. So you, it's an emotional discourse. It blinds you from reality. That what happens when you go through any type of bullying or any type of violence, it's a trauma. So the, tra the, the trauma takes over the the actual reality of it. Just because there's fifteen Pakistanis beating you up, don't mean that thousands of Pakistanis are like that. But that's how you feel at that time. And did you have your family to confide in in that time? Well, what happened was after two years of getting beat up by the Pakistanis, I ran home to get away from them, and they chased me onto my street. And as I've I've come and I've walked to the door, and it, and the, my mum and stepdad was in the kitchen, and they've told me to go out and fight them because I come from a family where you fight, and that's you know you have to go out and fight. So I went out and fight, and I beat two of them up, and I, and the other one ran off, and then from there they left me alone. So that was the end of me getting jumped by the Pakistanis, really. When did you start learning or understanding what Islam really was? I went. I, I didn't. I didn't start learning Islam till I was twenty-five. Like, okay. So I, I so I, I read the Bible. I studied the well. As growing in a te as a teenager, I was reading the Bible, trying to look and try to find who the Creator was, and I couldn't find who the Creator was. So when I was seventeen. I kind of stopped going to church and kind of stopped with the idea of, of Christianity, but I still believed in a creator. But instead of going to the church, I ended up going to the pub. Yeah. And this is where I landed. This is where a lot of my friends at that time went to the pub. So we started the pub life and this sort of idea of friendship in the pub. But this is where I met somebody who went through the same as me with the Pakistanis. So we both related because we both went through the same thing. And this led, led us to meet another guy who was, uh, he, he, he had an idea of what, what to do. It was a group of people that we can go there and we can go on these marches and stuff like that. And at that time, I didn't know what it was, but I seen the, all I seen was videos of like FGM from brown people with beards. Uh, honor killing from brown people with beards, and that's the start of me getting radicalized. That's uh, like in the idea that Muslims are here to kill us, and seeing that the pop is getting burnt and stuff like that, and showing us easy pop is getting burnt. At that at that point, I didn't really want to believe believe it, but I still went ahead and 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 went with this group, and I went on marches. They're known as the English Defence League. Okay, that's how it. That's how my journey with the English Defence League began. Was through. Meeting someone and meeting someone else who, who related to the to the idea that the Pakistanis are coming here to take over and kill us. 
And what age were you, did you officially start joining those marches? Around 19 years old. I went through a lot of uh, bad stuff at that time. One of my best friends killed himself. We found him and uh, also other things were going on. At that time, I was heavily uh, taking cocaine, drinking alcohol. And it just, from my emotional discourse, I always felt angry towards the Pakistani community. When I seen this, I thought, this is going to help us, our people. This is going to change. Our people need to stand up. We can't be going through this. That's how I felt at that time. Watching the poppers get burnt, watching all these things get uh, uh, get destroyed. At that time, we I would have related them them guys as every every Muslim, because I didn't understand Islam. I didn't understand all I seen was beards and that they're Muslim. It's it's, it's my my own arrogance and my own ignorance. I should have looked into it, but I decided to go to the pub instead of uh, yeah. looking into it. So there's a big change from joining the English Defence League to then joining Islam. Um, how do you describe that transition? So how did that start to come into effect? Well, when I was a part of the English Defence League, I always asked questions. I always asked, who, who is the Prophet Muhammad? Who is, what's the Quran? What is it? But nobody ever would be able to answer me. It was like going to the... I, 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 when I used to go to the church and ask questions, they used to say, oh, just believe in Jesus. Just, in the EDL, it was exactly the same. It was like they pushed you off. When anyone asked questions like that, it was always... Uh, no, 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 just backing it off. Some man said, but it was like, well, that doesn't make sense. So I always had an interest of knowing what it actually was because the first two years of being in the English Defence League, I was blind to everything. I was I was accepting everything. But the two years, someone just clicked in my head and said, look, you, nothing's changing. It's the same as it was yesterday. Not No one's getting killed in our country. Muslims live, Pakistan has lived, lived here for years. You know, I started asking myself these questions. For the next two years of being in the EDL, I was I was asking more questions, and that's when you start to get pushed out of the group when you start to ask questions because they think this guy knows too much. It's it's it's, it's that's how it, that's how I felt anyway. Well, when I ended up leaving the EDL, it was because Tommy started doing stuff for the Muslims, and some of the boys up north were like, "Just not, we don't trust him anymore." So we left the EDL because I left the EDL because Tommy started doing stuff for the Muslims, and then he ended up leaving the EDL anyway so I left and just got on with my life and just but never never ever told my mum what when I was in the EDL my brothers and sisters didn't really know one of my brothers knew I think and I didn't really tell anyone I didn't want them to be look up to me and, and, and that's how I knew what I was doing was wrong because I didn't want them to look up to me like that so I ended up uh Leaving the EDL, but that, I didn't just become Muslim after that. People think, oh, you've, you've gone from one extreme to another. A lot of people say that. Chris, you've gone from... I, no, I went from EDL and then I went back into my normal life for like four years before I become Muslim. It was like... I didn't come to Islam through e anything to do with e English Defence League. I'll... Uh, to be honest with you, it was, it was different. I, what happened was I was... Uh, so I went into a life of crime and stuff like that. And we was in a car and the car, we crashed at 90 miles per hour. But what happened was I broke my leg and I was in bed for like a year. I went, I was in hospital for three months, had an operation. That's when I started to look back into looking for the career. And what happened was I, I found, I found out about Unitarianism, Christian domination, that Jesus is, is a prophet of God. So I'm like, yeah, this is what I need to find. So I put it in the internet. So like, so I'm watching this channel for two months and the channel's called Merciful Servant. But I thought it was a Christian channel, I'll be honest with you. But I watched this channel, but I wasn't even realising that Muhammad was getting said and Hala, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was getting said. So, but for two months I watched Merciful Servant and I watched most of the videos. But it was, when they talked about Abraham, it made more sense. And they talked about Adam and Eve, it made more sense. You know, like it's not a blood sacrifice and all stuff like that. It was, I was like, this is Unitarianism. This is this is what I've been looking for. And then I had a Pakistani uh, taxi, taxi driver. And I, I asked him the question. I said, look, do you know what this channel is? And he said, this is my religion. So I was like, what's your religion? And he said, Muslim. I'm a, I'm a Muslim. And I went, what? But... This is what I always say. This is this is how this is how good dowry in action is because what happened was 
Even right. though I was mad it was Islam. Yeah. He put his hand on my shoulder and smiled and said, keep watching this video. So keep watching these videos. But I slammed the door, said, no, nah, I'd never be a Muslim. And I stopped watching. Uh, I stopped watching uh, Merciful Servant because I knew it was a Muslim channel. It was only a, about a month and a half later. I thought to myself, I really need to. I wanted to know what Islam was. I wanted to know what the Quran was. Here's my chance. And in that stage, I met a guy called Bashir at my work. We worked as security in uh, in Bradford. And, but I thought he was a Christian because he was a really nice guy. So when I, I, I spent some time with Bashir, we went for food. And he asked the waiter if, they did a, if it was a lal. And I was like, one minute, you're a Muslim? And he said, yeah, I'm a Muslim. And then that's that's that was like a, a bit of a turning point for me then because I thought Muslims can be nice people. And at the same time, that happened, I was looking into Islam and I was looking what it was. And I read a book about the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And I always thought the Prophet Muhammad was a warlord. May Allah forgive me. And I always thought he was this crazy guy who wanted to behead people and kill people. But it turns out that we far from, far, I was far from wrong. And that would be my advice for people is to read because it cha it changes the mindset. And then I think four months before I took my shahada, I knew that I believed that there was one God. And I always believed there was one God. I always had that belief. But it was like four months before I took my shahada that I realized that the Prophet Muhammad was the last and final messenger of all the prophets. That's when I realized. But Obviously, the dunya stopped me. The world, worldly affairs, like going to the pub. I didn't want to lose my pub friends. So for four months, I've, I was tackling this idea of becoming Muslim and trying to work out how do I become Muslim without having to leave the pub. So I ended up, for four months, trying to blank out Islam, I'll be honest with you, and try to stay away. But just kept everything just popping up and it popping up and... It came to a point where I said, look, I have to go and do what I need to do. And I rang Bashir to take me. But he took me, but I went there with a plan that I'll get, become Muslim, but I won't tell anyone. And I'll just carry on going to the pub. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had different plans on that day. Somebody recorded it and it went viral and that's how everyone found out. And then all my pub friends never spoke to me again. And two of my best friends never spoke to me again. Uh.